Uh, hi Fox, how are you doing? Let us see yet another game of this uh, tournament uh, rapid games Magnus Carlsen just played a couple of days ago in in Brazil. And here we're gonna say we're gonna see uh, a game he played in the open tournament. Of course he won that tournament, you could expect that. But this game particularly he didn't uh, I mean he didn't have it so easy because he played against another a young, strong GM from Brazil, uh, Grigor Sevak Mkhitaryan, who actually finished second in the Open tournament, losing just this game and winning all the rest of the games, an outstanding performance by a player who, by the way, has Armenian origins, Armenian roots. Um, you can say that by the surname, I guess, and who actually is, or at least was, part of Aronian's teams. He was a helper or a second of Levon Aronian, so. Quite a promising uh, young talent from Brazil with Armenian roots. And here in this game we're going to see him play overly an excellent game against Magnus Carlsen, just giving up a couple of mistakes and ending in, uh, in losing in the end game by this due, this due to these little mistakes. But overall he plays an excellent game against a player who is rated uh, 300 points above his his own uh, rated uh, rating. So there we go. Magnus is white, Makitarian is black. So we have an Italian game, a duo copiano. Not too much comments I'm gonna make about the, the opening because this is very, very theoretical and quite logical moves are being played. So the C3, D3 Italian, the duo copiano, a slow positional game, just a way to get out of the opening. Neither player has an advantage or problem here, but just it's the way to develop pieces and get out of the opening. D6, a very classical, slow approach, castle. A6, very typical move to play sometimes B5 to put the bishop on A7, etc. Bishop B3, anticipating B5. H6 to avoid the uh, the pin on G5. Knight BD2, castle, rook A1. Now the bishop goes back to A7. Knight F1, typical maneuver, similar to those in the Spanish in the Rui Lopez. The knight will go either to E3 or G3. Bishop E6. Now the knight goes to g3, the e3 square is left there for the bishop to be developed. Rook e8, and here finally Magnus decides to take on, to take on e6. And here both captures are more or less uh, valid here, I guess. F takes e6 uh, would give white this typical, uh, sorry, would give black this typical pawn structure in which a doubled pawn is not a bad pawn. In fact, it's a uh, and giving black the chance to play d5 and uh, get a couple of strong pawns in the center. So both captures would be valid. Krikor takes with the rook, bishop e3, and he takes on e3. And so far, really, black is doing fine and certainly has got out of the opening uh, with a comfortable position. Rook takes e3, but we all know that the games just begin after the opening is over uh, for Magnus Carlsen, so this is this doesn't mean. Black has uh, get, uh, Black has succeeded in doing anything serious. The opening is not very important for Carlson. D5. Black strikes into the center. I mean, previously, if White once again, if he takes with the F pawn, probably the uh, response would be probably the same. D5 striking first into the center. After Rook takes D3 once again. D5. This is a typical move, and in more or less uh, in these typical positions, even in the rear Lopez, if Black succeeds to play d5 with comfortable position, he is said to be to have equalized the game. But uh, it may be the case. I mean, nothing discusses that here. Black is doing absolutely fine. But as I said, you all know that uh, the, the opening is not very port important to win for Magnus Carlsen. He wants to play better in the end game, in the middle game, where he absolutely excels uh, above all his opponents. So queen b3 here, just uh, developing the queen, attacking b7, uh, having taken on d5, white doesn't win that much. In fact, black may win uh, the initiative here, because for instance if rook e1, now knight f4, attacking d3, so black may, may have even some initiative here. That's why he plays queen b3, just letting the tension in the center for the time being. Rook b4, uh, rook b8 here, just protecting. It was also possible d4, going even further with that pawn. If c takes, knight takes, attacking the knight. 
the queen, knight takes, he takes d4 for instance was possible, rook f3 and b5 and black is not looking bad at all, his pawn on d4 is quite quite a pawn there, taking lots of space, but still, these are, these are the positions that Magnus likes, just more or less equal, just a game of chess, just play chess as he would say. So rook b8 is still a very good move, not bad at all, black is uh, looking fine here, h3 to prevent knight g4, queen d7, rook e to e1, idea maybe probably is to open the e file, getting prepared for that, well, Carlson, uh, I mean, uh, Krikor anticipates, black anticipates, and he takes on e4 uh, on his turn, now Carlson, uh, Carlson takes with the pawn, well, taking with the knight was another option, but knight takes, and here, if rook takes e4, the queen could take here, and knight takes, knight takes, rook takes, an absolutely equal game, after all these exchanges, and if d takes, now the rook goes to d6, controlling the open d file, and certainly they are looking better, the rook and the and the queen on the d-file of black are look better than the couple of rooks of Magnus in the e-file which are just looking ahead against the wall of his own pawn. So d takes e4 was played team. Here now knight a5, queen goes back to c2, rook d8, the rook goes to the open file and once again black is absolutely doing fine. Kudos to Greek or Sevak to play solid against uh, the world champion b3 denying the knight the opportunity to jump to c4 g6 black does similar thing with the knight on g3 he can't jump to h5 or f5 and it's all as you can see a positional slow play restricting about uh, all about restricting opponent pieces the rook now goes to e2 from e3 to go, to be able to go back to the d file to be able to be uh, useful on the e file, knight goes back to c6 and now knight f1. Well, rook d2 and once again rook d6, rook e d1, queen e6, not pinned anymore and everything is more or less equal once again. Instead, knight f1, the knight on g3 wants to be relocated, improved. And knight h5 here with the idea to go to f4 and knight e3, with the idea to go to d5, all positional play, looking for strong uh, squares for the knight, knight f4, rook d2, rook d6, rook e d1, and the queen goes to e6. So far, Krikor is holding well, b4, king g7, a4, couple of exchanges here, knight takes d2, I thought here Magnus wanted maybe to relocate this knight to c4, who knows, even to b3, but after h5, nope, he had either ideas, knight f3 back, but what about my idea, knight d to c4, if rook takes, queen could take, here an interesting uh, sequence b5, a takes, a takes, knight a, uh, a3, attacking the pawn, knight a7, defending this, now knight d5, and the other knight could go back to c2, e3, uh, replace if need, if necessary the other the, this knight on d5, so well, still more or less an equal game, I guess. Knight f3 he played, and now rook d6, h4, very slow game, queen d7, now rook takes, queen takes, g3, knight d6. And now white after this rook exchange, etc., white is a little bit better, very slightly, and I guess due to this a couple of bish, uh, a couple of uh, knights of black, which are a little bit passive, they don't have that many squares to go to, and uh, white has a little bit more space on the queen side. So this is a minimum edge for white, but as we will see, Magnus will keep it and just force black uh, to make a mistake. Now knight c4 attacking the queen and queen d8. Krikor's uh, first mistake, uh, definitely a more or less fatal one because he's not losing, he's not lost uh, yet, but this is the kind of advantage you can give to the world champion and world uh, history's 
higher rest rated player and hope to get out with a win. Now it was much better to play to queen e7, the reason being this. The pawn on e5 is going to fall anyway, but now he has a discovered attack on the knight, playing knight c5. And if the knight takes on g6 to take a pawn, he takes on e4, the queen is protected by the knight. If queen takes, knight takes, the knight will not be taken anymore, but black is on time to take the pawn on c3 and wall once again this is more or less equal and should be holdable to a draw but queen d8 is worse because after knight c takes e5 knight takes knight takes he doesn't have a discarded attack so he has to play something like c5 but this is already uh, better for white ma much better you may say because he ha white is going to win space on the queen side of course taking is not that great now the knight gets activated but going b5, a takes, a takes, black cannot improve his position much more, knight c7, b6, knight e6, this knight, uh, note he doesn't have that many squares to go to, while uh, white has grabbed some space in the queen side with his important b6 pawn, his knight is much better, so this is, these are advantages the world champion uh, knows how to manage and he won't let it slip. Knight c4 he plays, Queen d7 and queen e2. Now queen b5 pinning the knight, uh, trying to be active to do something. Magnus just plays slowly, improving his position. King g2, queen c6, queen d3, taking the open file. Queen b5 once again. Black cannot improve his position much. And Magnus uh, just enjoys this position. Positions uh, slowly choking his opponents. Queen d5. Queen b3, now knight d6 attacking b7, of course b6 will be taken, but knight takes b7, this is already a pawn up um, for white, now queen goes to b2, but uh, probably he blundered this, uh, knight, uh, knight takes c5, and Grigor just resigned, uh, it's, it's a pity because he was doing absolutely well during the 90% of the game he was playing very solid and very well a very good game but uh, he just uh, well finally he made a couple of mistakes and he lost the game more than 40 moves 46 moves but still I think in my honest opinion he deserved at least a draw here but never mind he was second in the tournament just after um, just after um, Magnus Carlsen in the standings and losing only this game uh, winning all the rest of the game, so kudos to him. A great talent from Brazil. Uh, thanks for watching.